Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to be talking about art style, something that's been a ridiculously contentious topic in the art community for a multitude of reasons for, well, as long as art has existed, honestly. It's a topic I've discussed before and will discuss again, because there are a plethora of smaller points within the wider range of the subject that are worth talking about. How to develop an art style, how important having an art style actually is, whether or not art style theft is a legitimate problem, why certain styles face disproportionate backlash, and so on. But today, what we're going to discuss specifically is whether or not art style can be used as an excuse for bad art. I'm sure you've all heard it before. It's just my style, an artist screeches, defending their art of a character with hands twice as big as their face and arms of two different lengths. And in so many instances of that being used as a justification for anatomical errors, it's pretty obvious to us as viewers of that art that that's exactly what's happening. They're claiming their art style to be an excuse for objective mistakes and inconsistencies. But while there are certainly a great deal of obvious examples of this, there are still others that are much more difficult to objectively analyze. When is style an excuse not to learn the fundamentals and draw with more accuracy? And when are exaggerated features that don't conform to the standards of realism actually valid as stylistic choices? Where do we draw the line between the two? And potentially more importantly than any of that, is there any point in trying to draw that line at all? We'll get into all of that today, but first let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is an amazing VPN service, also known as a virtual private network, and its benefits cannot be understated. As someone who runs her whole small business online, my credit card is used for a ton of digital transactions every single day. And before I started using Surfshark, the result of that incredibly frequent use was it being stolen on four separate occasions. It's inevitable in a world where cybersecurity is so difficult to maintain, but if you're in the same boat that I am, there is an answer, and it's Surfshark. They mask your identity even on public networks, allow you to safely access your bank and complete secure transactions, and rest easy with military-grade encryption, ensuring that your data is as secure as it possibly can be. And again, if you're like me, you want to end a long day of running your small business with some much-needed downtime. But I'm Canadian, so I can't watch American Horror Story to wind down like I want to, because that's only on American Amazon Prime. Not with Surfshark, though. I can watch anything on any streaming service by easily switching my location, finally allowing me the perfect end to my day. And you could, too. Thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video, and don't miss your chance to get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash duchesscelestia with promo code duchesscelestia for 83% off and three extra months free. Anyway, all that aside, let's get into the video. What separates a stylistic choice in art from a mistake? When is it's just my style an excuse for drawing poorly? And when are deviations from realistic proportions valid as stylistic choices? Well, to most, the difference comes down to a matter of intention. Many have come to the consensus that if an artist deliberately chooses to exaggerate a feature or draw something in an unrealistic way on purpose, that qualifies that as style. But if it's not their choice to do so and is instead something that they either can't help doing or aren't even aware that they are doing, that qualifies it as a mistake instead. It is effectively the difference between I'm drawing this thing this way because I want to and this is the only way I know how to draw this thing. It's the difference between saying I want this big buff anime man I'm drawing to have gigantic yaoi hands and drawing ridiculously disproportionately large hands on a character because you just genuinely do not know how big hands should be in comparison to the rest of the body. Of course, this isn't a universally accepted opinion on it. Others will argue argue that even if the artist is choosing to draw a certain aspect quote-unquote wrong on purpose as a stylistic choice, if the end result of that stylistic choice is not visually appealing to the majority of viewers, it's still a mistake. This, though, is largely based on the unfair and unreasonable practice of equating your appreciation of a style to a style's merit, something I'll discuss more later. Basically, these are people that will say, it's fine for anime art to have unrealistically big eyes because I think it looks good, so that's style. And also say, this person draws unrealistically big noses and I don't think it looks good, so it's a mistake, not style. This is an incredibly flawed and damaging perspective, and again, I'll go into that more in the video's conclusion. But as far as my personal opinion is concerned, the preferences of an individual viewer should not play any part in determining whether something is a mistake or a stylistic choice. The validity of style cannot effectively be quantified, but the closest that we can come to doing so is to apply as much objectivity to that evaluation as possible. And to me, that means sticking with that initial analysis regardless of whether 
whether we like the stylistic choices or not. If the artist does know how a feature would look in reality and chooses to draw it differently than that, regardless of whether we think it looks good or not, I believe that we have to acknowledge that as a valid stylistic choice and not a mistake. Suggesting otherwise would effectively be limiting creativity as a whole. I don't personally like Picasso's work all that much, but I would never in a million years suggest that his stylistic choices are artistic mistakes just because I don't enjoy them myself. Limiting valid, appreciated, acceptable style to what we as individuals find visually appealing would deprive us of works like those of Picasso, Munch, Matisse, Klee, and so many more, and we have absolutely no right or reason to do so. Still though, there are some other ways to further establish when something is a mistake or a stylistic choice, at least to some extent, both in our work and the work of others, and that's by considering two things, consistency and believability. In terms of consistency, what I mean is that it can be helpful to evaluate not just one piece, but the entire body of an artist's work. If they draw their subjects with gigantic hands in every single piece, and all of those hands are consistently twice as large as they should be, it's probably a stylistic choice that they're making on purpose. But if the size of their hands varies inconsistently and is not regularly scaled to the same exaggerated size, or they sometimes draw them accurately and sometimes draw them inaccurately, it's probably a mistake. Of course, there are obviously still some cases in which an artist is drawing the same thing wrong over and over again in the same way, simply because they don't know how to draw that thing and it's just a mistake that they're repeating because they haven't learned how to fix it. But it's not exactly common for an artist to make the exact same mistake in the exact same way that many times. Like it would be one thing if an artist always drew hands in disproportionate sizes. That could be chalked up to them not knowing how to realistically draw hands. But for them to always draw hands exactly twice as large as they would be in reality in all of their pieces? That's much more unlikely, though not impossible, and is much more likely to be a deliberate choice. It's not a foolproof method of evaluation by any means, but it's certainly worth considering. And the second point, believability. This one is much more subjective because it does not account for more extreme abstract styles, but it's nonetheless worth discussing, at least for the sake of argument. When people mention believability in terms of evaluating a style's legitimacy, they generally refer to whether or not it adheres to certain fundamental rules in anatomy. For example, many would argue that you can make an arm as impossibly thin, large, or muscular as you want, regardless of whether or not it would be possible for it to look that way in reality, so long as the length of the forearm and upper arm are realistic lengths. The basis of this argument hinges upon the belief that anatomy can be exaggerated as much as an artist wants to accommodate their style, so long as their proportions conform to realism. A good example of this would be The Incredibles. Looking at this concept art, we can see that these body types, other than dashes and whatever the baby's name is, are not realistic. Helen is idealistically curvy with an almost impossible hourglass figure. Violet is extremely thin to the point that her calves look like they might actually break if forced to support the weight of a human being, and Bob is so muscular that his torso is as wide as like four violets. But their proportions do still conform to realism even if their actual features do not. Their arms, legs, torsos, heads, and so on, despite being exaggerated and stylized, do still more or less meet the proportionate standards of realism in terms of length and distance from each other. Many argue that this is the standard for making an appealing style, because exaggerating proportion in addition to anatomy too much sacrifices believability in the way the character reads. To put it more simply, it makes the character look like they could not realistically exist and function as a human being. And to an extent, I can agree with the main points driving this argument, but again, I also feel like it's unnecessarily restrictive when it comes to styles that simply do not want to depict their characters like they could exist in reality at all. Picasso wasn't drawing people in a way that intended for viewers to perceive them as if they could exist in reality, and his art never would have been what it was if he had been forced to do so. There is value in breaking every artistic rule, in pushing every artistic boundary, and limiting artists' ability to do so just to give some unnecessarily specific definition to what is and isn't a valid style rather than encouraging creativity in any capacity does not, to me, seem productive. Regardless, if you're trying to evaluate a style that does intend to conform to at least semi-realistic fundamentals, it can be worth considering this perspective because it might have some merit in that particular circumstance. Ultimately though, all I can really conclusively say about the evaluation of style is that beyond the tentative understanding of it being defined as a deliberate choice and not an unintentional mistake, it's effectively impossible to do. Stylized art doesn't have the same clear, objective, consistent standard to be judged against like realism does, because every single style is different, so we can't compare one style to another or to realism with any degree of fairness or accuracy. And at the end of the day, is there any point in doing so at all? That brings me to the other question I posed at the beginning of the video. Should we even be bothering to try to define what is style and what is a mistake? What motivates us to want to in the first place? Well, whether or not we should is, in my opinion, in 
large part dependent on that motivation. And unfortunately, the most common motivation is usually the least constructive, unsolicited critique. I recently did a video discussing why unsolicited critique is almost exclusively a harmful and unproductive practice, linked in the iCard above, so go check that out if you want a more detailed analysis of that. But the point here is that yes, a lot of us cringe when we hear, it's just my style. We envision a beginner artist defending their mistakes rather than acknowledging them and trying to fix them. But we fail to acknowledge why they're responding that way. And that's because 9 times out of 10, they're responding to someone who criticized their art without them ever having asked for their opinion. So while most of us can agree that it's frustrating and annoying to see so many beginner artists use style as an excuse to justify mistakes in their work, I think we also need to acknowledge that they're lashing out and getting defensive because they're receiving critique that they aren't ready for and didn't ask for. And is it really helping anyone to continue to give it to them anyway? Couldn't we just stop putting them in a position to feel the need to say, it's just my style, please stop criticizing it when I didn't ask you to? This is especially true given that it is so difficult, if not altogether impossible, to quantifiably and objectively define what is style and what is a mistake. It's bad enough to offer unsolicited critique that's accurate and correct, but it's so much worse to offer it based on our subjective opinions on what stylistic choices are valid and what of them are mistakes. Because we could be wrong. We have no way of knowing whether an artist deliberately chose to draw something unrealistically on purpose, or whether their doing so was a result of poor understanding and a lack of skill. And more often than not, people criticizing other artists' styles are doing so not because they have any factual basis on which to assert that their styles are bad, but instead because they simply do not like the style or find it visually appealing, and therefore don't consider those stylistic choices to be valid. And that's just such a harmful, unproductive, toxic way to approach it. If you don't like an artist's style, don't engage with them or their work. It's not helping anyone to tell them their art is bad because of it, even if you do think that aspects of their style are actually technical mistakes that need correcting. And that brings me to my next point. Like, even if you could objectively determine, just by looking at it, whether or not certain exaggerated features were deliberate stylistic choices by the artist or unintentional mistakes, why would that change how you engage with it? It certainly shouldn't, at least in my opinion. Because unless that artist asked for your opinion on their work, your ability to make that differentiation should not be at all relevant to how you respond to it. If you like the way their work looks, it shouldn't matter whether it's style or a mistake, because you like it one way or the other, so give it a like and a comment and support the artist. If you don't like the way their work looks, it helps no one to give them that feedback if they didn't ask for it. So it still doesn't matter whether it was style or a mistake, because neither style nor a mistake would reasonably warrant you giving your unsolicited input. The only time that I think this distinction is actually important is if your motivation is to improve your own work or consciously study the work of others. Because when it comes to fixing mistakes in your own work, it can be incredibly important to be able to tell when you're making a mistake versus when you're making a stylistic choice. And that sounds like something you would know by default, but that's not necessarily true. Because it being something you would know by default is dependent on you having studied the fundamentals thoroughly before learning to draw in an exaggerated style, which is not the case for many artists, my former self included. I started drawing anime long before I studied the fundamentals, which led to stagnation in my work for many years, because I didn't have the basic artistic knowledge to understand how to properly and accurately work within that style. I didn't learn the proportions of an actual human face before I started drawing Inuyasha fan art, so I based all of my art on exclusively the proportions I was seeing in Inuyasha. So while the art of that anime was stylizing a real human face's proportions, I was stylizing the impossible proportions of the anime's faces further, without any understanding of how to do so based on anything realistic. I wasn't thinking about how far the eyes should be from each other or from the nose or the mouth. I was just copying the art I was seeing in anime. So the way I drew faces was inconsistent and always a little off. That was because I had failed to study real faces first. And while I thought it was just my style or an anime style, it was, in fact, a mistake. And it took years of conscious and objective analysis and fundamental studies for me to actually realize that. And I think a lot of artists are in the same boat. So trying to evaluate your own work as clearly and impartially as possible might honestly help you better understand what aspects of your art are style and what are mistakes. Someone on Reddit put it really, really well, saying, Style is built from the top down, not the bottom up. And that was very poignant to me because I wish I'd learned that sooner. I'm still trying to unlearn all of the ways I learned the opposite. Learning the fundamentals before stylizing, whether you want to hear it or not, is one of the most important parts of growing as an artist. And furthermore, the evaluation of style versus mistakes in your work can help you establish what is effectively a stylistic baseline. As I mentioned earlier, the problem with judging style is that there are no consistent standards by which to do so. Unlike realism, where you can easily judge the artist's skill based on how accurately they manage to replicate reality, every stylized artist's work needs to be held to completely different, individualized standards, because there is no 
no common ground that can be applied to all of it. That can make it really, really difficult to determine your own weaknesses and strengths or measure improvement, because there are no easily defined benchmarks by which to do so. But by regularly and neutrally evaluating your work based on your understanding of what aspects of it are deliberate, intentional, stylistic choices, and what aspects are weak points in need of improvement, you can establish your own personalized standards against which to judge your art. And that's incredibly valuable. Being able to evaluate others' work based on similar standards for the sake of study can also be very beneficial to your growth, because pinpointing the mistakes of others can help you avoid them in your own work. And just as valuably, you can also more accurately determine which aspects are stylistic choices that you can appreciate and admire and might even want to incorporate in your own future art. Ultimately, in conclusion, while there are many ways that we can try to evaluate what is style and what is a mistake, I don't think it's necessarily particularly pertinent to try very hard to do so, at least when it comes to the work of others. Creepshow Art, a million years ago, made a video saying that style isn't an excuse for bad art, and effectively ended it with a conclusion of, shut up if you say it's just your style. You should want to improve, and you should be open to unsolicited critique if it's correct. In retrospect, maybe we all should have taken that as the red flag that it was, that perhaps, just maybe, she was kind of an asshole. And that is not at all the conclusion that I want to draw here. If there's anything I do want to impart here, it's that artists should have the freedom to experiment with style without being held to unreasonable and unquantifiable standards as to what is acceptable style and what is objectively wrong or bad. Because who are they hurting? If an artist says, it's just my style about a piece that's riddled with technical errors, who are you helping by arguing against that? If they want to grow, it's up to them to study, self-reflect, and ask for that critique if they're ready for it. If they don't, or if they don't want to conform to the majority's opinion of what constitutes good style, leave them be. Maybe they'll be the next Picasso. Letting them become that should be more important than bringing them down for no reason at all. Of course, these are all just my opinions, so as always, take them with a grain of salt. What do you guys think? I know art style is always going to be a controversial topic in every possible way, so I'm curious to hear all of your different perspectives in the comments below if you're willing to share them. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and thank you for watching. Special thank you as always to channel members Café Soleil, Joseph Solomon, Art of Amethyst Fable, and TC Pratt, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Unity, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Elenxi, Soul Crystal, Kim Yuyen, Shamil Sheep, Crazy Hassar, Gen Tong, Jacobus Peterson, Grayson Xavier, Tyfinch94, Milkbean, MG, Eclectrica, Blah Mage, and TC Pratt again for their support, and I'll see you in the next one.